All right, everyone, we here. It's draft day, and we got our first big trade of the day. We got Al Horford, a first-round pick in 2025, and tonight's 34th pick from the 76ers being sent right over to the Oklahoma City Thunder in return for... It's in the description probably, but... Danny Green! We need to start this off with a pause for Sam Presti. Let me get a standing applause. Not only did he just get rid of a player that was a cost fest in the NBA Finals, he's had a good career. Don't get me wrong. But trading him, that's not something that you're really going to miss too much, especially on a young rebuilding team. But you got back a veteran player that is widely respected in the, in the locker room. Danny Green is as well. But I think Al Horford gets more credit as a leadership play, type player in this part of his career. So they get that back for a young team that's not trying to contend right now. So the fact that he's been declining isn't going to hurt them so much. But they're going to get his leadership. And on top of that, a first-round pick and a 34th pick in a draft that is considered weak. But there's, there's considerations that you could maybe find a guy in the second round or early second round or late first round that it's really just like the top light. It's just light on the top, but there might be some deeper prospects that'll hit. So for the Thunder... Absolutely amazing. They turned Dennis Schroeder into, like, there, there's two draft picks, and they got, two, like, two from the Lakers, I think. So, three or like three first-round picks, one early second. That is spectacular. I don't know if they got how many first they got from the Lakers, but they got assets. And you just got two firsts for Danny Green. Amazing. Sam Presti, you, you learned from that James Harden trade. You got swindled. You got straight swindled. The ownership put it, you know, put it on you that you had to get rid of him, but you still got swindled for James Harden. And you said, all right, we lost some assets. I did a bad deal. But now, as soon as Paul George wants out, okay, I'm going to get every draft pick in the world. Bring them my way. I'm going to collect all the draft picks. All of them. And... Ooh, these Thunder are loaded with picks. And what I was saying when they made the deal for to get rid of CP3 was, you need to have good vets in there to, for these guys to develop. And now that's not a worry. They got back Ricky Rubio, who's a nice vet, and Al Horford, who's a great vet. And the fact that he wasn't able to produce on the 76ers, that's more of a fit. So I th more of a fit issue. So I think on the Thunder, he'll be able to actually produce and play pretty well. But let's get over to the 76ers side. Now we see what Daryl Morey's plan is on the 76ers. His first move is to get rid of Al Horford. I'll get rid of the picks as well, but I need to get rid of that horrible contract. And it shows he's, his thoughts is on get rid of these horrible contracts that Elton Brand and that crew signed last offseason. I don't know how Elton Brand's still there. Maybe those moves were like forced on him by somebody else or something. But he was the, he's the guy at the top at the time, and he's made two horrible signings. T Tobias Harris on a on a max deal. I don't want to over exaggerate and say absolutely t terrible because some people didn't mind it at the time because he's almost a twenty point per game score. But at the end of the day, he could score, but he's been shipped away from everywhere he's been, and most of the places he's been haven't been winning. And even on the 76ers, they've underachieved. So his impact on winning isn't as great as his numbers. That deal was bad, and it's going to be hard for them to get rid of that. And then the L Horford deal that we're dealing with right now. I said it at the time. If I had this channel, we would have, uh, we well, would have seen the good takes. But I said everyone was saying, "Oh, this is gonna be a defensive dominant team," and it was clear. Are y'all in 2019 right now? That's what it was 2019 at the time. Are y'all in this this era? There is no way a team with L. Horford and Joel Embiid that those guys are gonna be able to stay on the court together. Neither one of those guys can really guard the perimeter. L. Horford is not playing the power forward in 2020, and clearly it didn't work. They underachieved. Signing him to a, a max deal was idiotic. So Daryl Morey got in there and said, all right, we're going to sacrifice some picks, but we just got to get rid of this and give me some flexibility so I could bring in some big-name guys. Don't be surprised if in coming up, they do what it takes to try to get rid of Tobias as well because that's another bad deal. But good for them for get rid of, getting rid of Tobias. And, I mean, for getting rid of Al Horford. They had to give up picks. You don't love it. But Danny Green, bringing him back, you know, he didn't play great in the playoffs last year, but he is a winning player, and he's the type of player that they need. When he's playing well, he can really, he can really shoot it. He's very streaky, 
But you figure that he was bad last year, that he's about to turn around and have a good year this year. Because he had bad years on the Spurs, and then he turned around and played great. So I think this is going to be a turnaround year for him, like when he went to the Raptors and he played well pretty for, pretty much for that whole season. This is going to be similar. He's going to go to the 76ers where they need that spot-up shooting and defense. He's going to have a good year, impact the winning, and then he's off the books next year, and they have some freedom. So great, good trade for both sides. A standing applause level trade for for Sam Presti and a solid trade for Daryl Morey because they bring back a player that they can actually use, even though I'm not a fan of them having to give up a first for it. That's all I got to say about this. Let me know what your thoughts about this trade are. What, any any uh, any thoughts? And also, I'm going to be doing a, I'm gonna try to do a live stream of the draft. I'm going to start at 6.30, so tune in for that. Catch y'all soon.